Right everyone, we're going to be just doing a little simple watercolour of these cows. Um, first of many, hopefully, projects that you enjoy doing watercolours and getting out and being inspired by the British landscape. Or just generally your local landscape wherever you happen to be in the world. I'm going to use a 2B pencil to do the initial sketch. I'm on 300 GSM watercolour paper that I've just casually taped down. A set of watercolours and I will also be using some masking fluid areas of white. You'll need a pot of water, it's nice and clean, keep it clean throughout the process and a few different brushes, some smaller brushes and some big brushes. This also depends on how comfortable you feel using them. So to start off with I'm going to take my 2B pencil and I'm going to start doing my sketch of my cows. Let's start over here. Okay, so I've got my cows in my field, as you can see there. Now I'm going to start off by putting down my masking fluid to check, well, to keep all my white areas I want. So I've got a clean brush. Before I put my clean brush into any masking fluid, I'm going to work it into some washing up liquid to protect it. Otherwise the masking fluid will end up permanently sticking to the hairs and you'll have to throw the brush away. The wash up liquid will stop that from happening. Then I'm pouring out a little bit of my masking fluid. It's new masking fluid so I know it's going to be okay. If it's old you need to check on a piece of paper that it won't permanently adhere. I'm going to just lift that cut it up a little bit. I need a little bit, I don't need much. I'm going to take some of my masking fluid and masking out areas that I want to keep white. Now I wouldn't mask out all the white areas from the pattern. I'd masking areas out of the white because some of this you'll want to make a slight grey tone. It'll look more realistic. The masking fluid should be fairly thick, you can see here it's too thin. I'm just going to pick up a bit more and put that over. I'm also going to run a little bit more down that spine because when the sun's coming down it's going to be on the back of the spine that you hit a lot of the highlights. Now I need to let that dry off to make sure my brush stays workable for future projects I just take it, use some water and the uh, washing up liquid will make all the masking fluid come off my brush I'll then take a tissue and I'll wipe that down while I'm waiting for this to dry okay so while that's drying and it's pretty much nearly dry which is quite quick um, I'm going to mix up some neutral tint colour I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to add some red, crimson red, if you've got it, to an ultramarine blue to regenerate a purple, and then a cadmium yellow. Then 
it's a bit browny, plum. So you need to balance the blue within it to make it go slightly grey in tone, just like so. Once you've got that, then you use that for the areas that you're going to build up shadow. So obviously the patterns on the cow are a strong one. You might find a little bit in the background would throw the cows forward. So let's go in here. Look at the highlights you can see in these areas. Be careful not to put it in that area of highlight. You can treat it fairly loose and have fun with your brush strokes. Don't feel they have to be tight with watercolour. It can generate a nice atmosphere with a looser brush mark. Right, I've run out so I just need to remix. It's not ideal to run out halfway through. Do try and make enough to get through the area you want to generate coverage because you will find that when you make it again it's never quite exactly the same. As you can see it's a little bit more browny than this. But I'm going to add a bit more of the red in and a little bit more of the blue. Should just balance it out. I'm going to dilute it and throw it a little bit into the background to contrast against areas of lighter colour in this picture especially as you've got quite a lot of darks with patination diluted neutral tone for areas of darker grass as well. Now I need to allow that to dry and then come in with some basic colours. So be patient or give it a blast with a hairdryer and speed up the process if you want. Right, so generally the neutral tint is now dry, so we've done the drawing, I've put masking fluid on top of the drawing to protect areas I want highlights, which is going to be the white of the paper. Then I've come in with my neutral tint, laid that down on areas that I plan to have quite dark, and now I need to start putting that mid-tone shade in. So first of all I'm going to deal with the areas that are light, where I've left parts of the areas of white cap. I'm going to put in a very mild yellow ochre. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue to make it a tad kind of greyy brown. But it does have to be diluted with water. Make sure that it's not too strong. Then I'm going to start painting in some of the areas that are going to be white for the cow. I'm going to put in a little bit as you can see here and then I've taken a clean wet brush and I'm smoothing that colour down. Now I'm going to take a little bit more blue and create a slightly more greyy tone for some areas. You can see for instance on the side of the cow where the light from the sun isn't quite hitting it. It'll contrast and when you throw in the strong dark shades on the pattern it'll really throw it up. Now I'm going to up 
my yellow for a little bit. You can see here the sun's hitting. I'll go for a little bit of yellow ochre in these patches as well. I think I might just need to get a little bit more of a grey shade. For some of the patches of muscle which are in shadow. Right, while that's drying, I'm going to draft in a little bit of green for that background so it contrasts against the hard, quite hard white and black patination that we've got. I'm taking a cadmium with a little bit of ultramarine. I'm going to take some of that over here and add a lemon yellow to make it a bit brighter in a few areas of the picture. But because this yellow has been made from this, this yellow, this green has been made from this yellow, then ultimately the two will look quite nicely together. I'm going to throw in some of that now into the background over the top of that initial shadow tone. Because the green is specifically made from yellow as well, you're going to find that it's a little bit more translucent and is affected by that first layer of neutral tint. A little bit more yellow. You can do this far more refined than I'm doing it's just because it's quick and easy to show you exactly what I'm doing and why. Now I'm going to take some of that yellow green that I've made. I'm trying to keep to the same recipe so it brings the whole picture together. So I dilute with some water and just bring in a little bit of grass around my cows. Set the scene out in the fields. Okay, so you can see there, magically it all starts coming together once you put that background in. However, I now need to really allow it some time to dry so that I can remove that masking fluid and then come in and fine tune some strong shadow work. Okay, so it's all thoroughly dry now. I'm gonna just go over my finger and remove the masking fluid. And you should end up with some cows like that. Once you've got that sorted out, then you need to start doing the really hard work. So I'm going to darken up the pattern a little bit more on the cow and probably increase the tone on the grass to throw the cows forward. To darken up the cow, I'm going to use a dark brown. You can see here. Which is a burnt umber. And then I'm going to add black to it. I'm trying not to add a huge amount of water. The water will lighten the tone. And I want it to be fairly dark. Now I'm going to come in and work left to right because I'm right handed. Obviously you go the other way. If you have the different hand preferences. And then I'm going to start filling in some of this dark patination on the cow.
see how dark I've gone then. Now I'm gonna grab just a fine brush and pull in a little bit of detail here and there. Like so. You see the cows are starting to come forward. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to mix up a little bit more of a stronger green. Actually, I'm going to put in just a slight gentle brown for the collar around the neck. That just lifts those forward. Let's go in for a nice green. So a bit of cadmium. marine blue, keeping it real simple. I'm going to just throw up those cows with a little bit more grassy information. I'm going to go for a little bit of a stronger darker green for those trees. So again, it's all about the balance of yellow to blue behind the cows. And now, because I've got that colour already sitting underneath, I'm thinking about generally generating brush marks that represent tree textures. Obviously you can take that tone up and down, balancing the blue to make it go darker and the yellow to go lighter. You should end up, hopefully, with a nice little sketch of cows looking like so.